Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we are here with a Corrupted Gauntlet and regular Gauntlet Guide for Old School RuneScape and my Endless Adventure to make as many guides as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like. Would appreciate it greatly. On top of that, got a Discord and a clan chat that you can check out down below as well if you want to be more involved with my community. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. So to start as far as the requirements for Corrupted Gauntlet and regular Gauntlet, you're going to need the Song of the Elves quest to be completed to even access this place in the first place. So that's the only hard and fast requirement that's going to be absolutely necessary because without it, you can't even get here. Along with that, 85 plus in all of your combat stats would be ideal. In addition to that, 70 to 77 prayer and also maybe augury and rigor would be very helpful if you have those. You can come here with lesser stats. However, Gauntlet can be pretty difficult, so just be careful. And then in addition to that, having decent skilling stats of the plethora of skills that will be within the gauntlet is going to be helpful since it'll allow you to get resources faster because you're going to have to make your own gear, your own potions, your own food, all that in here. But of course you can get by with lower, it's fine. So I'll be going through the notable loot now. I'll be talking about it in terms of the corrupted gauntlet rates because that's really where you should be doing this. However, the regular gauntlet rates will be listed. Elite clues are a one in 20, so very, very common here. Crystal armor seeds are a one in 50 drop and they always linger anywhere between five and 10 mil in terms of price. So that's a very good drop, that's somewhat common. The enhanced weapon seed is a one in 400 drop, which is the very, very pricey item that you'll be hunting here. The pet is a 1 in 800 drop, and the loot per chest is about 800k, which is pretty wild, especially considering it only takes 10 to 12 minutes to be able to complete this. So with that math at 10 to 12 minutes per kill, you can get about 4 to 4.8 mil per hour here. And because you'll be making all your supplies within the area, you're not going to be spending any money in terms of supplies you're going to have to use on food or any of that. So this is just pure profit. For your inventory whenever you're coming here, it would be nice if you could bring Vengeance since that is going to deflect some damage back to the monsters whenever you go in. I haven't really mentioned it yet, but when you go in there, you're not going to have any armor, you're not going to have anything in your inventory. You can still bring things, but they won't appear when you're in the gauntlet. So that's why Vengeance is helpful because it actually does transfer and it's like the only thing that does. All your skills, all your stats get reset once you go in. In addition to that, you're going to need a teleport to Priftinus. So I have a bunch of different ones in my inventory. I pick which one works best for you since you've already completed the quest. You've already probably been to Prif. You know how to get here. For the plugins that are going to be very helpful for the gauntlet, first you're going to need tile indicator plugin. Turn on your true tile plus destination tile. This will show where you're at at all times and where your character is going. In addition to that, I have NPC indicators. I have this so that I can shift and then right click to mark Hunlift so then I know where the main boss that will be fighting is located because if you step under, it's gonna deal a good melee attack to you. And in addition to that, I have some plugins from the plugin hub. So to get there, just look at the bottom of the Runelight plugins, click on it, and then type in the following. The first one is just the gauntlet plugin. Then there's the gauntlet plugin. In the gauntlet plugin, I turn on the resources plus the overlay resource icon and tile. And those are the main plugins that I use when I go to Gauntlet. So before we get there, we're going to talk through some of the basics that you need to know about the Gauntlet. So we'll be going into a pretty large area where there are tons of different rooms and you'll start close to the middle next to the main boss. And then you have to go and adventure outside of it. On these outside rooms, the main things that you can expect to find, there are ores, which you're going to have to mine. There's bark that you're going to have to woodcut. There's a linum that you're just going to have to pick. There's herbs that you're going to have to pick up off the ground. There's also fish that you can just fish with a harpoon that you'll be given. And then there's also crystal shards, which are a form of currency within the gauntlet. You get them for doing skilling activities, killing monsters, basically doing anything in there will yield you some sort of crystal shard. And so with these supplies, you can then make what you're going to need for the boss. So if you have ores, bark, and linum, you can make armor. If you have herbs plus crystal shards, you can then make potions. If you have fish and then you use them on the range, you can then make food. And if you have fish that you use on a range and then use crystal shards on, you can then make karambwans. As far as combat items, there is a weapon frame that you can get from killing monsters inside. This is used for making any sort of weapon that you can get within Gauntlet. And then from there, there are three bosses within Gauntlet. There's the Dark Beast, the Dragon, and then a Bear. The Dark Beast yields a string, which is for the tier three range weapon. The Dragon yields an orb, which is for the tier three mage weapon. And the Bear yields a spike, which is tier three melee weapon. 
So now that we know all the items inside, we'll break down the main room that you'll be starting in. So at the northwest spot, there is a singing bowl. This is where you're going to make almost all of the items within Gauntlet. This is where you infuse your crystal shards with other items to then make your gear and your inventory of items that you're going to need. The middle area has your tool location where you can go in there and take out anything that you start with within the gauntlet if you've dropped them for whatever reason. And then the southeast has a range and a water deposit that you can use for your potions and your food. Essentially, whenever you're in gauntlet, you're going to want to do a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation through the five rooms that are around the room you start in. So while you're doing that, you can find most of the resources you're going to need, if not all. And then on top of that, you can then check three different rooms to see if there are bosses in them. Bosses are only able to spawn in the three middle rooms on each edge of the map. So that's why we're doing this rotation because it allows you to find a lot of resources, see if there's any bosses on your side of the map, and it's going to be the fastest way to do both of those things at once. Now, before we get into breaking down some runs, there is an important question that we have to answer, and that is whether or not you want to have tier one or tier two armor. Tier two armor is going to be safer. However, it's going to take longer. So if you're not comfortable with the boss fights yet, tier two is going to be the way to go. If you feel comfortable already, then tier one is going to be the way to go. Or if you just want to get used to the best method possible, tier one is better because it's going to take less time and thus you can get more kills per hour. Of course, the reason you would want tier two armor is because it has better stats. And also in addition to that, whenever you go into the Hunlift room, there are multiple different ways that it reduces the amount of damage of you taking in that room. So generally speaking, it's a different tier of armor where you're going to be much safer in the boss fight rather than tier one, where you're gonna have to make less mistakes and it will be more punishing if you have tier one. So I'm gonna enter a tier one run right now to show you what I do. So we see where the Hunlift is. We're going to want to go to the north around these five rooms up here. So we start there, we go out to the east, you can kill the small monsters for a weapon frame if you'd like. Personally, I'd rather not do it, but if I have enough shards, I will. So whenever you go around here, you're going to want to grab three of your ore along with three of the bark and three of the linen. So we're gonna to wanna to look for a mining, a wood cutting, and a farming icon. While I'm doing that, I'm checking the north rooms to see if there are any bosses up there. That one did not yield one. I'll pick three linum over here. In addition to that, you're going to want to pick up one or two herbs. So I'm going to pick up a root over there. Typically, if I find a wolf or a scorpion or any of the medium level monsters, I will kill them because they give a lot of shards, which makes the run a little bit easier. In addition to that, they'll more than likely give a weapon frame. If you don't get a weapon frame from killing a monster within a room, kill everything within the room, and then you will go ahead and get it. So say for instance here, if I don't get one from the wolf, I'll go over and kill the scorpion. And there we go. I got another leaf and I got a weapon frame and now we can head on out. I have 130 shards. Typically I aim for 210 to 250 shards from each of my runs. So there's no boss up there. We'll see if there's a boss over here or else we're gonna strike out. There is a bear up there. Take note of that. I'm going to want to make a melee weapon whenever I get back on over to the bowl over there. And then in here, I'm going to want to chop away at these roots. Then once you've done that, you can go ahead and drop your axe and your pickaxe since you're not going to need them anymore. I don't have enough shards to the point at which I'm comfortable, but in addition to that, I would like to find some fish because you're going to need a full inventory of fish at one point or another. So typically on this first run, I like to grab 12 pieces of fish. Luckily, there's a room with three fish right here, very conveniently. One thing I will note is around the Hunlift boss spot, one of these rooms within the nine rooms surrounding it will have a spot where there are three fishing locations in it. So if you're running low on fish, do a lap around the Hunlift lair and you will find fish. Another notable thing in here is to spam click the fishing spots. If you do that, you will constantly get fish as you go. While if I just sat here and kind of waited for it to happen, it's a lot slower, so I wouldn't recommend it. Also take off your prayers whenever they're not needed. I'm not very good at doing that, but at the end of the day, if you do this fast enough, you won't have to worry about it. So now I have everything I want. I use the corrupted teleport because I have enough crystal shards. If you have 250, then you can teleport back. If you have 210, I wouldn't do it. So once you go ahead and head on over to the singing bowl, then you can make tons of different things. So we have the teleport crystal right here. We're gonna make one of those since I already used one. In addition to that, there are vials. I'm going to make one of those. I'm also going to make tier one of every single piece of armor. In addition to that, since there was the bear up there, I'm gonna make a tier two halberd. And then beyond that, I don't really need anything else. I'm going to wear all of that, head on down here, fill up my vial. Then I'm going to cook some food at the range. Whenever I do this, I leave four food in my inventory. That way, whenever I go back to the singing bowl, I can turn those four food into karambwans on my second trip. 
So now that I have that done, I'm going to run on out to the boss that I found while also making a potion. So you use the vial on the herb that you found, you then use your corrupted shards on a pestle and mortar, and then you use the dust on the vial and that will make a potion right there. This potion heals a ton of prayer. In addition to that, it acts as a stamina. So it is very, very useful and is going to be a necessity throughout. So the bosses aren't too hard to kill. You just gotta pray a melee against the melee boss, range against the range boss, and mage against the mage boss. It's very simple. From there, go ahead and pick up whatever they drop. I got the spike, which is the main part, but I also got a leaf. In addition to that, a weapon frame. You're going to want to have a second weapon frame. However, a third isn't very necessary. So whenever I kill the next one, I won't pick it up. In here, since I still need some fish, I will go ahead and get those. You're going to want 20 to 24 whenever you are done with your run here. So I'm currently at 16. This little uh, plugin tells me what all I have in that regard. So it's very helpful. So I'm just going to grab 22 because that should be more than enough for me. And then I'm going to run through the outside over here. So again, the bosses cannot spawn in these corners. So don't worry about those. Just focus on the three middle spots on each edge. Here we have the dragon. So I'm going to go ahead, pray mage, pray piety, and sip up on another sip of my potion. We also are going to need a couple herbs. Luckily, there are some herbs in here. Typically, you want to get back to the main room with 40 seconds left. That way you can do everything you're going to need to do. If you're not going to get back with 40 seconds left, I would probably just log out and try again before you get sent in to Hunliff without having all of your necessary supplies. So I have everything I need. I got an orb, I got enough herbs, and I got enough fish as well. So I'm going to teleport on back. Your crystal shards, you should have enough at this point. There's really not too much you have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and make a halberd. In addition to that, since I have the orb, I'm going to make a tier 3 staff. And then along with that, I am going to make two more vials and I'm also going to use the shards on these fish that I mentioned earlier to make the corrupted paddle fish which act as karab ones and from there I'm going to fill up some vials use my herbs on them then use some dust you can also combine potions to save your vial and then you can fill up another do that again and then I will make two four dose potions and drink up the rest that is extra from there, you can drop basically everything that you have. You're not going to need it. Pick up your paddlefish that you dropped prior, and then go ahead and cook the final bit that you have in your inventory. Then from there, you can head into the boss fight, but we are going to talk about the tier 2 armor, and then we'll talk about the boss fight. So since we've already done one full run, I'm just going to talk through the steps of the tier two armor setup and you can figure it out from there. It's much the same as to what I was doing before, just kind of change up how you manage your trips. So for the first trip, basically you're gonna do the same five room rotation where you run around in that circle around the base room that you start in. This time, instead of focusing on any food or anything like that, you're just going to want to obtain seven ore, seven bark and seven linum. That's going to be enough supplies to be able to make your tier two armor. You won't have enough shards after this trip though, so we'll talk about that in a second. You'll want to grab one or two herbs along the way, also a weapon frame, 210 to 250 shards again. Then go ahead and create a tier one armor set and create a tier two weapon. Make one to two vials, depending on how many herbs you've attained. Then drop your extra ore, linum, and bark by the singing bowl for later. Then to start off trip two, make a potion with the vial that you have. Run to the bosses or try to find them along the way. Make your potion and fish anything that you see. Kill one to two bosses and also kill one to two med level monsters for shards. Along the way, fish until you have 16 to 20 fish. Grab enough herbs for two potions. Prep for the boss fight and for your inventory, you're going to want to have two weapons, two potions, 16 fish, and four Karam ones. Now that we know that, some notes for the boss fight is to start that it will be painful. The Corrupted Gauntlet is not a joke, even the regular Gauntlet is not easy by any means. So if you're struggling, just know that everyone does. It's not a natural, don't get dissuaded by it. Unlift changes its attack style after every four attacks that it deals on you, so take note of that. Changes between range and mage and it will always start as a range based attack. Hunliff also changes its prayer every six times that you attack it. So if you're attacking with mage, it'll change to mage. If you're attacking with range, it'll change to range. Whatever you're using, it will change to. Avoid the red tiles on the ground because once they turn yellow, they will hurt you greatly. Also, don't run underneath Hunlift because then she will stomp and do a pretty nasty melee attack that hits pretty high. And also, there is a tornado phase every so often where you will have to run away from anywhere from two to four tornadoes, depending on how far you are into the kill. While you're doing this, you also have to avoid the tiles on the ground. You'll have to change your prayers according to what Hunlift's attacking you with. This is a good time to eat and drink and regather yourself and just reheal because if you're also focused on attacking the boss, it can be somewhat detrimental because it's just too many things to focus 
focus on, at least if you're learning. Eventually, over time, you might be able to get the hang of it. But with that said, let's go ahead and do an example kill. So a couple notes before we actually get in there. Um, one thing that is very nice to do is to have your quick prayers on a protect from magic because there is a certain attack that whenever it's using its mage attack, it can take off your prayer. And so then if you can just turn it back on like that, at least you'll have the mage prey already on. <laughs> In addition to that, three tiles away from every door in here is a nice spot for late in the round. Basically, once Hunlift is below 300 HP at the end, it gets very hectic, and all of the yellow tiles will not hit you here. These are essentially safe spots where you can just stand during the end of the kill, and you won't have to worry about the floor below you changing in a manner that will be detrimental to you. So those are the two main things to note before we go ahead and get in. Now I'm going to go and prep and see in a second. So I'm all prepped for the kill, ready to go. In terms of the weapons that I bring, I really just bring whatever the first two bosses I find are, so this time it happens to be melee and range. Um, if you can, I guess for me personally, I would prefer mage and melee since I don't have rigor. If you do have it, then I don't know. I mean, mage and range is pretty nice considering you don't have to get within melee distance, so it's a lot more flexible. So personally, if you're learning, I'd recommend mage and range, but really it's up to you. I think for speed and efficiency purposes, you just go with whatever two bosses you find. For my inventory, I have the tier three bow, a ton of food, two potions, and then four Karambon type foods up there. Uh, the way I like to organize my inventory, I put my weapon by my protection prayer, so that way I can just do that, switch on over, use F keys, definitely use F keys, if you don't already f keys are so essential so please use them go to your settings set them up there you go key binds do that set it up to whatever you prefer but without f keys this is going to be terrible so f keys are majorly important um, i also have the potions and the crumb ones very close to all that too so i don't have to move too much so going on in i'm going to protect range throw on the piety and hop on in get ready to go uh, I think I untagged it for the video, but there we go. Back at it again. Wait for four hits to go off, and then you're going to want to switch to your Mage Prayer, like so. Then after that hit, go ahead and switch to whatever the other attack style is. Whenever it stomps, it will do the Tornado attacks, which then you're going to have to run around and uh, just navigate the outside while also changing prayers, depending on whatever Hunliff is changing its attack style. So you can note whenever Hunless changing its attack style because it will do that sort of big stomp that you just saw a second ago, like that. Now I know it's changed. There's also a purple-like attack that will turn off your prayers, as I mentioned before. That's why we have the quick prayer set up. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So this kill is not going very, very well for me. Sometimes you just get really unlucky on the hits and maybe you take a hit or two and off you go. If you're someone that's learning and you're struggling during a kill, I would say just stay as long as you can. Even if you don't think you're going to get the kill, it's still worth it to spend time in here and learn. It's very, very important because the only way you're going to get better is just by doing it over and over and over. And this is part of why Corrupted Gauntlet's so difficult, because personally, even for me, I have maxed out combat, other than 98 attack, and I still struggle in here. Mostly because I don't have rigor, I feel like if I had rigor, I wouldn't really struggle too much at all, but it is what it is. As you can tell, I've been avoiding the red and yellow tiles on the ground, like I mentioned before, you don't want to go anywhere near them. I'm not even going to show you what happens if you do, you basically get hit like constant 15s and 20s. It's pretty ridiculous. Ideally, you have Hunlift off to the side, not in the middle of the room. I'll show you guys here in a second how you can kind of manage to push her around if you want to. And I'm sure now you guys get an idea as far as why the true tile indicators and where I'm running and all these tile markers are very useful, because in here, if you're just a step off. I mean, it can be life or death. So if you're trying to get Hunlift to move, say I wanted to move her to the north for whatever reason, I would walk one tile under, then two tiles back, and as you can tell, she moved there. She moved one tile to the west, which wasn't ideal, but at least she moved. That's kind of the point. If she's in a very bad spot, you want her to at least move somewhere. So now that we're getting towards the end of the kill, there's going to be a lot more tornadoes, and the ground's going to get moving quicker. So this is where, you know, if you can't attack, don't attack. Just run around and make sure that you're praying everything right. You're doing everything A-OK, -okay. you're not going to take a ton of damage all at once. And so now that we're about at 300 HP, I would try to start sitting on the yellow tiles that I have marked. During the end of the kill, you either want to be around the inside or around the outside. You don't really want to be anywhere in between because it can be rough. You also don't want to have yourself wedged in by Hunlift. Say, for example, if I was going to stand right here, over here, I, I'm not going to stand here long. I can promise you that because it's probably going to lead to my death. So I'm going to get on out of here before anything bad happens. I do only have two food left, so <laughs> we might have to do another kill just for the final bit of it, just to show you that I could do it. I'm telling you, this place is not easy. I had a full prep. I had everything ready. Now, I could blame it on me having to talk and do this at the same time. You know, it's, it's not the easiest, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just, oh my goodness. All right, I'll be back getting a kill just to show you that I can. Also, if you want some perspective in terms of my kills and deaths, I have 424 kills and 152 deaths. So quite a lot of deaths. You may say, well, I must be bad at this. You're probably right, to be honest. But in addition to that, I do do a lot of streaming while I do this, and I'm often very distracted. I don't find it all too entertaining just to sit in here and sweat. It can be somewhat monotonous and a little bit boring, but I like to spice it up a little bit, and sometimes that leads to me dying, and I'm okay with that. So for this boss run, there's really not too much for me to talk about. I've talked about most all of it, but there is something pretty cool that you can do, which is where you only get one tier three weapon and then you get a tier two weapon and it has to be a tier three weapon of range or mage and the other tier two has to be range or mage. And then your third weapon is technically your fist. So you have all three attack styles and you only have one tier three weapon. This is called a five plus one. Basically I go in here, I protect range, I throw on my range prayer and I'm gonna attack five times. And then whenever it's about to change, I switch to my staff so that it prays mage and then I go back to attacking with range. So as we'll see here in a second, I'm gonna throw on my mage prey and then I attack with mage and now it's praying mage. And then I just go back to attacking with range. Now that it's praying mage, once my six hit is going to go on through, then I attack with my fist. So if I've timed everything right after this hit, I go ahead and hit with my fist and now I can use a range again. And so basically this allows you to be able to do an entire kill while only having one tier three weapon. You could technically do a kill with just tier two weapons or something along those lines, but getting a tier three weapon is very important. It's gonna be very good for your DPS. I mean, even here I have it down very, very quickly and I don't even have rigor. So if I did, it'd be pretty wild. Now, of course, I'm talking to you guys, so I kind of lost focus, and now I got attack with Mage, but it is what it is. If you're really sweaty, this is something that could be worthwhile to you to save a little bit of time. So now that we're down to the end of the kill again, I'll talk through what is going on. So here, again, you're going to have to be very, very weary of when the tornadoes are called in, because once those are called in, that's where really everything sort of hits the fan. So once they're here, just go ahead, and if there's room in the middle of the area, I like to just run back and forth and move over a tile every time I do. Uh, typically that works best for me and then I end off the run by doing a little something like this where I drag them around and I'm good to go. Then I make my way back on over to the marked yellow tiles where I am nice and safe. This is really the best spot to have Hunliff at the end of these kills because whenever this is happening, um, if he's not in these middle tiles, you can just kind of run back and forth. In this example, I'll wait a little bit to see and I will go back across. I'm probably going to tank that. There we go. Now run around the outside. Easy as you like. And just like that, you're reset, ready to go. Also, if you're sort of stuck in a pickle and you have to run under Hunliff at any time, this would be the most ideal time, sort of late into these kills, because if you do mess up, it could definitely be dire. And so if you have to run under Hunliff to either avoid some of the red tiles on the ground or to avoid some tornadoes, you do what you gotta do. It is what it is. Also, one thing I didn't really mention until now, don't have your auto retaliate on in here. <laughs> do not do it. It is uh, it is a death trap. It really doesn't matter for the beginning of this, but whenever you're at Hunlift, there will be times where it attacks you and sort of drags you back in. Could drag you over tiles, into tornadoes, anything like that. It's just not a good time, so I definitely recommend turning it off. But there we go. There is the kill that proves that I know how to do this, and I didn't just pay someone to get 425 kills on my account. And there's a chest that's more than likely filled with sadness. But I hope that I didn't leave you guys with sadness and that you were able to learn a little something through this guide. If you were, feel free to leave a like. I'd appreciate it greatly. Ooh, where are we going? Again, plenty of links down below where you can check myself and my community out. And if you want to see more videos like this as soon as I go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh, peace.